Here we go, high speed sync. How to set it up and how to make it work. Beautiful girl, high speed sync, how can you go wrong? Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slant of Lands, we're downtown Los Angeles. We're gonna do a little shot of beautiful Angela Whitworth here, looking back into downtown. We're going to high speed sync our Baja V4s. The reason we're gonna do that is that we wanna crush the background a little bit. We wanna have control of our shutter speed. So we'll be able to shoot at a thousandth of a second. That means we can open up the aperture, make it pretty wide open. Gives us a nice highlight with our strobes on her face. So we'll see the big buildings in the background and test this high speed sync on the Baja V4. Why high speed sync? To understand high speed sync, we need to understand how shutters work. Shutters are two curtains that open and close. The first curtain, and then the second curtain. At speeds slower than 1 25th of a second, sometimes 1 60th, depending on your camera, the first curtain opens and stays open until the shutter closes, then the second curtain closes. That's for slower speeds than 1 25th or 1 60th. At shutter speeds faster than 1 25th of a second, the first curtain of the shutter opens and before it can completely open, the second shutter starts to fall behind and close. This means that there is no time that the sensor is open to light all at once. A small opening is traveling across the sensor, exposing it as it goes. If your strobe goes off during this time, it shows a black bar on the bottom of the frame. The way high speed sync solves this problem is it starts firing the strobe in pulses as the first curtain opens and it continues to pulse until after the second curtain closes. This pulsing is happening so fast that the sensor perceives this as continuous light. So what's the upside to high speed sync? Why do we use it? First off, this keeps your strobe synced with your camera at faster shutter speeds. This allows you to shoot with a wide open aperture in bright light situations, giving you a nice shallow depth of field because you can keep speeding your shutter up to make the background go darker and darker. You can also light your subject with strobe light and then use the shutter to darken your background so the person stands out a little bit. Remember, shutter controls ambient light and we match the aperture to the power of the strobes. So if we choose F5, now we can move our shutter speed faster and faster to make the background dark enough to either let the person stand out or to make it dark enough so that it matches the strobe light on the person's face. High speed sync gives you complete control of your strobes at all shutter speeds. So what's the downside of high speed sync? First of all, it takes more power. I lost about a half a stop on the Bajas when we went to high speed sync compared to full power uh, without high speed sync. So you lose a little bit of power. Some strobes may lose more than that, I don't know. But know that you're going to lose power when you go to high speed sync. And with more power, you're going to use your battery up a little quicker. But you know what? In comparison to what you gain with high speed sync, it's a pretty nice trade off. So let's get our Baja B4 set up for our high speed sync. The first thing we're gonna do is turn it on. That's a good place to start, turn it on. Then we're gonna hit the RPT button until it goes to H1. It's gonna show us now that we're in high speed sync. We now have the ability to dial this up or down. We can go up to H7, which is the most power the Baja will give us in high speed sync, or we can dial it down to H1, which is the lowest power that will give us in high speed sync. We're gonna keep it on H7. That'll give us the ability to shoot at a thousandth of a second, which will allow us to crush the background just a little bit and shoot a little more wide open with our aperture. Last of all, you need to push the plus that's on the remote that sits on your camera so that the high speed sync will connect with the Baja before. Let's take a look at our shoot downtown. In Los Angeles, you can get a permit to shoot on the streets. You can't be on private property and you can't block the sidewalks, but you can shoot on most all the sidewalks. It's pretty reasonable. Our camera settings are 320 ISO, 1 500th of a second, and F 4.5. We're gonna make our background blue by simply putting our white balance on tungsten and then putting a full orange on the strobe. So let's get this all together and kind of see what's gonna happen here. We're gonna shoot a lot of different shots. We've got a couple of mirrors we're gonna put in place. Just see how she looks next to the mirrors. We'll do some without the color crossover and some most with. I like the look of the color crossover. It looks really nice down here. Let's look at our lighting breakdown. Our key light is a medium silver line softbox. It's going to give us a really nice highlight on her skin. I'm going to allow the shadow exposure to be bright enough so that it shows blue into the shadows on her face. That's it. One Baja B4, Dynalight medium softbox, and a full CTO. Here are some of the images unretouched. You know, it's so nice to be out and not have to worry about power. The battery powered strobes these days are just fabulous. I then put on the 15 to 30 millimeter Tamron lens and shot some more images. I love this wide angle look. Last of all, I added a second Baja B4 as a rim light on the camera right side. And then we took a mirror that we had, flipped it upside down, put it up underneath her chin and reflected just a little bit of white light back into her face. 
Here's a quick lighting buildup. Key light, rim light, just the white back side of the mirror became a reflector card to bounce a little light underneath her chin. Here are some more images with that three light setup. I then took one of the images into Nick software and I put a bicolor filter on it. So I put a little bit of green in the corner and allowed it kind of gradates a little more blue up in the upper corner. Just thought that was interesting. I hope you learned something about high speed sync today, how we can control the background with the shutter, whether that's long or short. So check it out, use that high speed sync. Post note, the reason I like high speed sync on a monoblock compared to those little tiny flashes is that you got enough power to do something with. I hate those little flashes. Keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. And don't forget to buy one of our t-shirts that we don't have yet. Don't estimate alone. Don't stand out in the cold all by yourself. Try to put together an estimate. Go to thuslandlands.com slash estimating. I've got a digital download that will teach you everything you need to know. You don't have to be alone any longer. Hi, this is JP Morgan. I'm a short man on a box with a tall woman. Stay tuned, it's gonna be exciting. Is that good, Kate? Are you loving it? <laughs>